All right, Morgan, we're going, man. Thanks for coming to the show. Awesome. Thanks for having me. How are you? I've been good. I've been good just hanging around and uh, being lazy for most part. So after my workouts and stuff are done, it's been uh, it's been good. Nice to be home and enjoying it. Is that what you do after workouts? You just do nothing? You just yeah. relax? Yeah. I mean, once if I'm working out and skating, I'm usually done by like noon or one. So I'll take the dog for a walk back home and maybe go to the range and hit some balls or something like that. But for the most part, it's just spend time with family and get up to the cottage or something a little bit. That's always nice. But for the most part, it's, uh, it's nice to get to... Uh, unwind a little bit in summer so you, you had a dog yeah what kind of wheat and terrier wheat guy. and terrier i don't know yeah. what that looks like no does he swim a, or she he, swim he, yeah he loves swimming so he doesn't like me too much he loves my mom so yeah uh, really yeah yeah she takes care of him the most but uh yeah, i don't know it's nice to have someone around the house when justin's not home and uh hang out with him for the most part so do you think he doesn't like you because you're away from the house so many like the whole year pretty that's much? probably it too yeah i know it's my mom and my dad who are always walking him and spending time with him in the winter and all that stuff so that's probably part of it but he uh, i don't know what's going on with him we're, <laughs> we're bonding a little bit we're moving in the right direction there you go yeah um so the life of morgan Barron seems to be pretty pretty good right now <laughs> man new york yeah. rangers draft pick cornell university finished with the most points you seem, are you healthy right now? You're not injured at all? Yeah, no, everything's been healthy. So it's, uh, so life seems pretty good. How are you? Was this, well, let me ask you this. Was that, was this in the, was this in the playbook when you were younger? Did you see all this coming to fruition or did it just come day by day? Uh, it, it was mostly day by day. I mean, I've been pretty much all hockey all my life. I played a bunch of sports growing up, but I always knew hockey would be the one I'd probably stick with in the end. Um, and yeah, I love it. So uh, I don't know. It's probably been more a day by day thing just because obviously there's times in your career where there's ups and downs. And you're not really sure how things are going to turn out. But um, like you said, life's pretty good. I really don't have too much to complain about right now. I'm pretty grateful the situation I've been in. And, you know, I a lot of people to thank for that. But for the most part, I've just been really enjoying myself every day right now. So it's been awesome. So what do you do up at Cornell outside of hockey other than I heard you're a pretty academic guy. Is that true? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, kind of got to be down there when whenever you're going to school and doing hockey. It's a lot of time management. It's Ivy League. That's an Ivy League school, yeah, right? It yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, decent amount of schoolwork. Obviously, a lot of time at the rink and playing hockey. So those are the main two things. And, you know, it's college too. So the guys get out and have a little bit of fun here and there. But it's, uh, yeah, no, I know. I love it down there. I can't wait to go back. How far is it from New York again, you said? New York City, it's probably like four and a half hours. That's um, not bad. Yeah, no, it's not too bad at all. And then it's, it's actually pretty close to like Ottawa, Toronto too, depending on, uh, it's like f you can get through from Toronto in like four hours, Ottawa maybe a little bit less. So it's pretty close to a lot of things um, in terms of those cities. Sick. Yeah. So how do you balance hockey and school? Because obviously, you know, actually I can't even say obviously, maybe school is more important to you than hockey, but it seems the way your future is going, you want to focus more on hockey so how do you i guess balance the two yeah it's kind of a crapshoot at first your first little bit you <laughs> try to figure it out and you're getting pounded with homework and tests and stuff like that but i think for pretty much everyone on my team hockey is is the priority for the most part i mean obviously you got to take care of all the academic stuff yeah. um but you know the main reason i'm there is because of the hockey and, and to be able to combine that with a great education is huge but um yeah again once you figure it out it's not too too bad uh, you got lots of guys around you helping. Like for the most part, all your team is taking pretty similar courses. Oh, and yeah. You make friends who who are able to help you out, and if you need tutors and all that stuff, then they take care of that for you. Um, so yeah, when, once you figure it out, it, it gets a little bit easier. And definitely, my first year was a little bit tougher, but um, yeah, it, I mean it's time management. Everybody has to learn to do it at some point. I always love the question, especially guys from around here, because like the Mooseheads are such an yeah. an influential team in the queue and major junior in general. It's mm -hmm. when you're younger, you just look up to those guys. Yeah. and guys that go the different route i'm sure you've had this question asked for you a million times but what made you decide to go to cornell yeah i mean like most kids around here i was uh i was pretty intrigued by the queue growing up and uh, we had season tickets to watch the mooseheads play and yeah and all that kind of stuff so um it, it was a uh, it was tough decision for me um i would say one person who who had a big influence on it was dean decision so i don't know if you know dean at all but yeah, he's coaching yeah, it down dean. now and uh he played four years at University of North Dakota and was a two-time national champion there. So, um, and, he, and he coached me growing all the way up, uh, pretty much from Adam right through to Bantam. So okay. um, he was in my ear about a little bit and just kind of making sure that I was aware there's all these other options. And uh, that was that was a big thing for me, was just kind of understanding that there's this whole other world of hockey down south of the border. And um, I'm really glad the, the way things worked out. I mean, 
obviously there's tons of kids who go through and play in the Q or the O or the dub or whatever and, and are yeah. happy with it. But uh, I think for me, it was definitely the best choice to go down to the States and kind of explore that part of it. And um, I'm really happy I did again. It's, it's an awesome experience. What are those tours like? So like people say they go down on tours for a bit. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You just like, do you practice with them or you just sit there, watch a practice, go have dinner? What do you do on those things? Yeah. So there's official visits and unofficial visits. So I think I, I never had an official visit because I had already committed by the time. I think you need to be in grade 12 or like your senior year before you can take an official visit. Okay. So okay. that's when they like pay for it all. Um, so a lot of the time for me, it was just like, if we had a tournament in Boston, I would go visit a school in the area who was like recruiting me and, uh, like one turn, we had a tournament in Boston when I was playing prep. And oh yeah. St. Andrews. Yeah. Yeah, St. Andrews yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We had a tournament in Boston at Christmas time. So my parents came down to watch me play and all that. And, uh, at the end we went and visited like two or three schools, I think it was, and, and checked all of it out. So you just walk around the campus, you meet with the coaches and kind of sit down and talk about like. And all the different academic programs you might want to do, like where they see you fitting in their program and however many years and um, yeah, whatever. Like you might get to, to meet some of the guys on the team pretty briefly or whatever. Did you get to meet some of the guys? At Cornell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I went down on a Friday and I had a game on Saturday. So it was actually like, like I said, it was like four hour drive from Toronto to get down. Yeah. So I watched the game. I got there like Friday morning, watched the game. Um, walked around campus a little bit with the coaches and talked to them and all that stuff. And, and I would have met a few guys like for a couple of minutes, maybe after the game, they just come out and shake your hand and say yeah. hi. Um, so though, I think that was good. You just get to put faces to names and it's mostly for me, at least it was to go down and meet the coaches. Cause that's a huge thing. You kind of want to know who you're going to yeah. be playing for and what you're getting yourself into. Um, but the official visits are more like official visits you'll get to go to like a dinner with the team they put you up in a hotel for like a night or two and um you might you might go out with the guys after like do all that fun stuff so the official visits are probably like a little bit better opportunity to get to know all the guys and the teammates and all that yeah um but I, again i never got one of those i was too busy playing in my senior year so that's good man too busy yeah. playing hockey that means yeah. you're doing something right yeah exactly i would yeah. listen to the players though. i don't know if i was ever in those situations i would always feel maybe you have the, a different experience but i was mm -hmm. i would always feel like the coaches are trying to persuade you to play which they are oh, yeah but i don't know i just feel the players would tell you how it is like this is what time practices this is when off ice is yeah i don't know that's just me no though. no you're absolutely right i mean uh it was actually mitch vanderlin too so he he's from new brunswick he played at ross day oh yeah um and he was i think he was a freshman when i down and visited uh, and I had been put in touch with him. So i like I said, I met him briefly, probably talked to him for like five minutes after the game. I think they had lost at the time. So they weren't too, obviously they were kind of yeah. moving on and pretty pissed. Um, <laughs> but I had been texting Mitch and calling him a little bit. And, and so that was kind of where I got most of that perspective from uh, a player's point of view. And that, that's, that's a huge thing. You get to meet what kind of guys and, and see what kind of people are there and what their schedule is and how they like the school and stuff like that. So um, that was really helpful. And yeah, I mean, now being on the other side of it, when we have recruits in, yeah. um, like a lot of the time I'll oh, yeah. come, yeah, Never it's on the other that. side. So they'll come to like the house and check it out and you know, whatever it is. Uh, and you, you, yeah, you try to give them a sense of what it is because it, we don't want kids who aren't going to, you know what I mean? Like we want kids who are going to fit in well there and who want to be there. That's the biggest thing. So yeah. Uh, for the most part, it's like pretty straight shooting. You're not going to try to sell a guy something that's that's not Cornell. You try yeah. to give them the best experience they can, the most genuine experience, and hopefully they enjoy it. So what is Cornell? What's the what's the culture like there? Uh, it's I mean, it's pretty intense culture. Like we we work a lot, long practices. Um, and it's I, I think from an outsider's perspective, it's pretty like old fashioned. Like we're a bigger team for the most part. Uh, like love blocking shots, play a really physical game, all that kind of stuff. And I think the culture has changed a little bit as the game has changed, which yeah. has probably been good for us uh, in a certain sense. But at the same time, it is, uh, I mean, it, really close knit group of guys. They don't recruit guys who aren't going to fit in the locker room. Like it's just as much about like the academics as it is the hockey. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty tight knit culture. So I really like it. I think it works well for me. And um, I don't know, just such a great group of guys in the locker room. That's probably the one thing that once I got there, I was like, oh, this is going to be an awesome yeah. couple of years for me. Like, I'm cool, really cool guys and uh, have a lot of fun. Obviously, great hockey players. So. Are you guys well known on campus? Like, if you're just walking around, will someone come up to you and be like, big fan, man? Uh, I mean, you, you get a few kids like that. For the most part, we're just normal students, which yeah. is like the, the way we like it. So, uh, I mean, we're not like... I, I wouldn't say it's like the Mooseheads are here. Like, everyone yeah. recognizes them and stuff like that. You get a few kids who who um you know might be fans but for the most part it's uh yeah it's pretty tame is it yeah. is there other sports there other sports at that school that are more popular than hockey no hockey's the biggest the one. biggest one i was gonna hockey's say the biggest one uh, i would yeah uh, 
hockey and lacrosse team is actually really good. Um, Did you ever play lacrosse? I played box around here. It's Did good you? lacrosse down there. Yeah, I saw the sticks over there. I haven't played in years now, but I actually love going to watch the lacrosse team. I would say in terms of like personalities, we probably have like the most similar personalities to the lacrosse team, so we get along with them pretty well. Yeah. And they have like a very strong culture, winning culture. I think they have a few national championships and all that stuff, so they're uh, we hang around with them quite a bit. They must only play field down there. Yeah, none of them even heard of uh, like box across when I tell them that we used to play in like rinks. They never. There's they the never Americans. Knew that. They always play field. Exactly. Yeah. Until they hit pro, then they play box Both in the dogs. NLL. The the pro teams coming here, the Thunderbirds. Yeah, I heard that. After this tonight, they're they're running a camp, and we're gonna go film and do interviews and stuff like oh, that really? with them. That'd be cool. I'd like to get to some of those games. Yeah, hopefully. Is yeah. It, there's a pro team up in New York? I think. Yeah. There must be. There's everything. Everything's I mean, in New York. Yeah. There there wouldn't be one in like Ithaca area, but I'm sure there's one in New York City somewhere. So. When uh, when you were getting, I, I shouldn't say you got recruited by the Rangers, but throughout the year before you were going to get drafted, mm-hmm. were, uh, was New York at a lot of your games due to the fact that they're only four hours away? Well, I, I got drafted at St. Andrews, so Sorry. I mean, it would have oh, been yeah. a little bit further away. But yeah, I mean, there was, there was myself and actually another kid on our team that year got drafted, and then there was a third kid who was probably like right on the fringe and ended up going to a development camp. So there was a decent amount of teams like coming in and out the doors at, up there and uh I mean, I met with them probably two or three times as well. And so, I mean, I was pretty familiar with some of their faces. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, once you get into the NHL, there's the one thing is like I, I felt like there were scouts there everywhere. And I can only imagine what it would be in like the major junior games and stuff like that because there's more kids who are yeah. on the fringe of getting drafted. But that was a pretty, uh, pretty I don't know, big awakening for me to see how serious all that stuff is taken. How pumped were you when you got drafted to New York? No, oh, I was I was really happy. I mean, I, I cheered for New York a lot growing up. Did you? And, uh, yeah, I was actually. I was a big fan. So, um, the, I don't know. The draft was like a weird day for me because it, it, I was sitting there with my family and probably went a little bit later than I expected to, and which is understandable. I had a good draft year, but I had a few injuries and yeah. things, so I knew it was a possibility I would slide. But I mean, you're sitting there. I think it was like 170 picks. It's a long time to to wait through. And uh, I mean, it definitely got frustrating towards the end. And then all of a sudden you hear your name called and it's like a complete 180 here on the yeah. other side of the world and everything's everything's great. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was I think the first emotion was probably a relief when I got drafted. And then within like five minutes, it just turned into like absolutely I was ecstatic. Yeah. Um, and then it's a pretty quick turnaround. You go right to development camp and everything. So it is really like a whirlwind, uh, but it was awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for how things worked out looking back on it now. Um, when you go to development camp for the first time, whenever I have NHL guys on, they always say the way that they treat you compared to junior to the NHL oh, is yeah. a step up. And the furthest I ever got was uh, was major junior for a, mm-hmm. a little bit. And the way they treated me for the, just those couple of games was amazing. Yeah. So I can't even imagine the type of treatment you guys get in the NHL. What's that like in New York? Yeah, I mean, I think if you talk in, in the pro guys I've talked to have been involved in like the New York organization for a little bit, they all say New York is like... Top notch. It's as well as you're going to get treated anywhere in the world. So it was, uh, and I mean, even for a development camp, you can see there's just a certain level of professionalism. And give me an, um, give me an example, like the the level of professionalism, like what, uh, like how, like where, how do you see professionalism when you're coming in there like a sponge for the first time? Yeah, well. I, I think the first thing is the way that like the kids who had been there for a few years carried themselves around the rink. Like they were very meticulous about how they went about their day and introducing themselves to people. And uh, even like I remember getting drafted and going up into the draft room and there's guys up there like Jed Ortemeyer who played for the Rangers for quite a while. And I remember reading his Players Tribune like a month or two before and being like, oh crap, like this is this is him. Yeah. Uh, and then Chris Jury's up there and so you meet him and you're exchanging numbers and you know talking about what's going to happen and all that stuff. So. I was just to have those people who like I remember watching them play on TV and stuff growing up and you know they're basically like some of your idols who you love watching play uh, and now all of a sudden you're getting to meet them and they're t- saying about how excited they are to have you in the organization stuff like that uh, th- that was pretty cool for me and it just really stood out uh, as to how great an organization New York New York would be um, I know at Cornell you played at MSG a couple mm-hmm. times correct yeah what's that experience like and don't just tell me about on the ice tell me about like how the bus pulls up I heard yeah. you guys have to walk up a ramp it's yeah, like yeah, talk yeah. about the whole experience how that goes down yeah so uh, it's like Thanksgiving weekend American Thanksgiving like end of November uh, so New York City's <laughs> pretty busy as it is like there's people everywhere and I, I remember pulling up and 
I don't know how the buses even drive downtown New York. It's just stupid how they like maneuver some of the corners. Why? It's just so packed. Everything's packed. There's people everywhere. They're tight corners. Like, I, I wouldn't even be able to drive a car down there. I don't think, let alone like a giant bus. But anyway, so I was, <laughs> I was pretty like entranced and you get through, get through get to MSG, which I had been there once before because of development camp, but you get there and they, it's called like red, red hot hockey. Cause it's us and BU is like oh, the name okay. of the game. Did you play against Bowers in the game? Yeah. Okay. So that was, we play against BU every, every other year. Okay. So okay. that was my first year was BU and, uh, like the stripes coming down MSG were like one would be red and one would be white and one would be red. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but like yeah. they have the, the lights colors? that shine. Yeah. And they can change them all the time. Oh, on the side of the building. It's like this big circular building. And then, yeah. They kind of bring you up the uh, in through the back and lower the gates or whatever, and you drive in. And then, yeah, there's like this big, uh, like curved ramp. I guess you walk up with your gear and stuff, and you have to carry your gear up the ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just because there's so much going on at MSG, we didn't even have a dressing room the first night you got there because I think there was a concert the night before or something like that. So definitely, you literally laid your gear out like in this gated off area and then i think when we showed up the next day for the game it was all like put in the dressing room and stuff and we were in the visitors locker room which is like i don't know it's we had like the basketball room beside us and then the actual dressing room which is just uh, it's pretty sick like is it is it not like the yeah. away room is nice yeah it's pretty i mean it's nothing like crazy with amenities and stuff like that but just like the stalls themselves and like all this space yeah. that you had it was pretty cool and they have like the training i don't know that was the first time for me you kind of got to pretend at least like to experience the yeah. nhl um and you play in the big rink and Cornell is a huge alumni base in New York city as well. So like Sick. the rink was almost packed and, um, my first year we won. So it was a lot of fun. And then last year we played like terribly. So it wasn't <laughs> quite as, uh, quite as good a trip, but, um, I mean, overall the experience is, is really cool. When you're playing in these big rinks, do you even know, like, be honest, do you even notice the crowd? Are you too focused on the ice? Like it's hard in the middle of the play to look up in the crowd and be like, holy shit, there's 15,000 people here watching yeah. me. Like no. how do you experience the crowd when you're like playing the actual game? I remember in warmups at MSG, I, like it was starting to fill up. Obviously it wasn't full. And I remember looking up and being like, this looks like it goes up forever. Really? Just because it's so tall on the sides. And it's it's a unique setup because it's very, like, circular, I found. I don't know. It like wasn't, the roof or the, the Well, top? the roof is all a circle, but even, like, the stands, it all felt, like, kind of circular to me, which yeah. is, I don't know, maybe that was just me. But, um, yeah, and then once I came out in the game, I didn't, I don't know, I don't really get too entranced with the fans and stuff like That's that. Fair. And I remember seeing a picture after, and I think we had just scored, and it was my, my goalie she sent it to me, and it was just, like, me giving him the fist bump. Yeah. And it must have been taken, like, from the bench, but you could just see, like, all the way up, all the people. All, and it was, I was, that was when it kind of hit me. I was like, oh, crap, there was, like, 16,000 people there. That was kind of cool, <laughs> looking back on it. Um, so, yeah, awesome experience, and I can't wait to do it again this year. Could you imagine, though, like, if that, you know, if New York Rangers are your home, that you'd be playing at MSG every single night. Yeah. I know it's hard to put into words and how you can – you'd feel because you haven't done it yet but yeah, just yeah. knowing that that's a possibility within the, the next couple of years holy yeah. smokes yeah no i mean that's definitely something that kind of keeps me going through these long summer days and the yeah. growing days of the season you kind of want to uh yeah I mean, that, that's the goal i'd love to be there someday so what's the um I want, I'm, I'm always intrigued with food i love food i want to know what mm. the the food situation is at cornell in the cafeteria mm. do you guys just go is that your that's your main source of you don't get groceries or things like that or you guys just have a, a cafeteria you go to yeah so we it's actually cornell dining is like i think it's ranked like top five in the country for because there's a hospitality school which i think that's what stein is taking at school he's in the hotel program anyway so is there's he? like a big yeah there's a big like culinary aspect to it and they take care of some of the cornell dining uh, dining also there's like most of us, uh, all of us are on meal plans, and I think there's like 10 different dining halls you can go to. Must be a massive campus. It, yeah, it's huge. It's very spread out, too. Um, Is that why it was difficult at the beginning to find your classes? Because it was yeah. so spread out? Yeah, yeah, that was part of it. And actually, so as a freshman, they put you up on like the top in the north campus, they call it. Yeah. And it's a little ways away. So you would like, they give you a free bus pass. You would bus down to campus every day and like walk around from there. Uh, and you could do the walk. It'd be like 10 or 15 minutes to get down to like where most of the classes are. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty spread out and I think it's, so there's like f for sophomores and up, there's like five dorms and most kids live off campus, but each of the dorms has a dining hall in their basement. So you get to go like, you can go check out like the menus and kind of go look through what each of them serving that night and pick whichever one you want. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah. And you get like a certain amount of swipes and then on campus, there's more like sandwich shops and things like that where you can like order a burrito bowl or whatever and oh, you get yeah. a couple hundred like campus dollars you can spend. So uh, the food was much better than I expected it to be. It's actually really good. I know, because apparently this there. freshman 15 thing is a real thing. Yeah. But I guess if you're an athlete, you burn yeah, it off. not for us, no. Um, we're skating 
a crap ton. I'm working out and stuff all the time. So it'd be pretty. Most guys on my team are trying to gain weight anyway. So I'm really? sure they'd, they'd welcome a couple of pounds, but we're always skating and working out so much. When uh, when we had Heinem on, or not Heinem, Henman, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, it's a big, I got to work on gaining weight this summer. Yeah. I'm like, we'll go to school, go gain some freshman 50. Yeah, that's yeah. how you'll put it on. Learn how to do it. Yeah. Are you on, uh, not was it, are you in a dorm room or do you guys have like a hockey house? Uh, freshman year, you got to live on campus. So did, we you, did you like that? Yeah, it wasn't even a dorm. It was like townhouse is what they were called. So it was like a mini apartment kind of thing. Okay. Um, there was four of us in there, th three of us on the team. And then I think we had like 10 freshmen my freshman year. We had a big class. So there was like, th I think there was three different townhouses. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was cool. I mean, you lived with a roommate that year. Like there was two double rooms. Uh, and my roommate was awesome. So it was good. Who'd you have uh, as a roommate? Cody Haskinen was his name. And then across the way, uh, Tristan Mullen was the other kid. Okay. There's the three of us in there. And obviously you go pretty close. Uh, and then you're right, like you're within... I don't know, like a 20 second walk of the other three guys on one side and four guys on your team on the other side from their townhouses. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, I really like that. And then after your freshman year, you move off campus for the most part. Like we have three hockey houses. Wow. Um, so my house is the biggest. There's nine of us in there. Huh. Is your stuff still there? Like when you go back, it's just there. Yeah. It's 12 month leases you have to sign. So oh. we have the room all summer, uh, which is, I mean, nice. I'd rather not be paying for it, I guess, if I'm here, but yeah, that's, true. that's how the, the college town housing situation is so you suck it up but um yeah it was fun i mean nine guys in the house i think uh they all play on the team or played on the team like some of them don't play anymore but real good group of guys and then there's two other houses so um same thing like you're within walking distance of each other whenever there's uh hockey games on or the guys are pretty into like the bachelor and stuff during our uh, are you during january yeah i got into it this year <laughs> i didn't i never said i never thought i'd watch it like i was pretty against it but uh yeah, it's it's kind of during like the part of our year where the whole school actually leaves it's in like january why do they leave um it's, it's a really long break like you can write your last exam on december 9th and you got to be if you're a normal student not an athlete you don't have to be back to campus till like january 22nd or 23rd or something like that Jeez. so yeah they, they shut the campus right down and then that's did you when, go do you go home no no we you stay have, there we we get like maybe six or seven days off right around christmas but yeah. other than that like we have games and stuff so oh yeah um we got to be uh, around campus uh, so that's when that's like my junior hockey experience we joke around about is because <laughs> I never really got to play it but that's like when you have nothing to do all day you just go to the rink and practice and then go home and find yourself watching The Bachelor for two hours every night because you don't know what to do with yourself <laughs> well you can live through your brother through the junior experience yeah. I'm sure he can tell you all the stories about yeah. what he's doing yeah I mean he he's still in high school I think most of the kids in their team actually take classes anyway so that'd be uh, keep themselves a little bit more busy but um, yeah he's still in high school He's he's doing well he loves it there so how proud is your family of him about what he's doing right now? Real proud. Yeah, he's doing super well for himself. I get, I love coming back and because I got to see, actually watched every single game at the Memorial Cup, whether he was playing or not. So uh, did you? I just got home in time for it. I had to actually move one of my exams around, but I made it home for their first game. And then, uh, yeah, I love watching him play. He's out of the World Junior thing right now. So we watched his two uh, apples last night. Yeah, yeah, we watched his game last night, and he's doing real well for himself. So we're all really proud of him. Do you guys keep in touch throughout the year and just like fill each other in on on what you guys are doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we both get pretty busy, obviously, but um, whenever we can, we'll FaceTime or text each other and just see what's going on. And obviously, I keep close tabs on on their yeah. games whenever they're playing. So um, yeah, he's going to be a player, I think. Who's uh, who's giving who advice? Are you giving him advice or vice versa? Um, or a bit of both? Probably a bit of both. I think naturally I maybe end up giving him a little bit more than he even wants sometimes because <laughs> I'm like the older brother. It's my yeah. natural instincts. But, uh, <laughs> That's what I thought. I mean, he's a defenseman too. I'm a forward. So half the time if I'm telling him stuff about defense and he's probably just brushing it off like he should because I yeah. can barely skate backwards. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's... Uh, he's uh, I enjoy talking to him whenever I get to catch up because obviously we're in two pretty different experiences with school and, and with uh, Major Junior and the Mooseheads, but it's always fun to kind of hear about the experiences yeah. and what everyone's doing. Did you uh, go to the West? I went to the West for one year before I went to prep school. So oh, I did yeah. my grade 10 at the West. Okay. Yeah. I went up there for all three years. That's a good school. Yeah, I actually liked it there. It was fun for that for that one year. I miss it. Did you ever try to come back to the school just to like hang out for a day, like with your friends? Um, we always had prep guys try to come back. Yeah, I might have gone back for like one one day in grade eleven, but for the most part, I think I was probably coming back, and their school was already over. Um, so okay, never got back to too much. All right, let's get to uh, the mentor question. So these sure. questions are brought to you by On Point. Three questions of the show. First one: uh, Who is the biggest mentor of your career? I would have to say probably my father and my mother. Both of them have been awesome. And 
how have these people shaped your career so far? I think especially as like a young kid and a hockey player, it's really important to instill good work habits and understand what working hard is and being a good teammate. And they were both uh, two people who are extremely hardworking. So um, I would say that's the biggest thing is it taught me what it means to work hard, what it means to be a good teammate and to care for, for, for each other. So that was probably the biggest thing they've taught me. And if you could talk to your younger self and tell yourself how valuable having a mentor is, what would you say uh, to your younger self? I'd tell my younger self to really enjoy the time you have around them because, you know, when all of a sudden when grade 11 rolls around, you're leaving home, you're really going to miss having two great mentors around as much. So um, even still, we keep in touch fairly often, but to have two people like that at home, it was it was awesome. And I think it's only uh, it's only helped my hockey career a ton. So was it ever tough leaving the leaving the house at such a young age? A lot of guys have to do it to pursue mm -hmm. a career, but some guys are easier with it. Some guys are a little bit harder. How, how did you deal with it leaving? Uh, I remember when they first dropped me off, I was kind of rattled. Like I was, yeah. it's, it's pretty rude awakening. Like one second you're living at home and you have everything taken care of for you. And then all of a sudden you're thrown into a dorm room. You got to learn how to do laundry and <laughs> uh, take care of yourself. Um, but I, I think it was good for me to get away and, and kind of just distance myself from, from all the Halifax hockey stuff with the queue and everything and, and learn about everything else. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a little bit tough, but I would say, by the end of like my grade 11 year, I was, I was happy with the decision I made and, uh, it was definitely benefiting me in, in ways that I never really expected. How hard was it to, to learn how to do laundry? Did you ever uh, mess up a load? No, I've been pretty good with it actually. I mean, they, my mom tried to teach me before I went away and <laughs> it only took a few minutes. That was one thing I thought would be harder than it is. So I still don't have it down right, man. <laughs> I still mix the whites and the darks and I mostly just throw all my stuff in there together and it's, so that's what I do too. But it then hasn't bit me in the ass yet, but it's, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> now I start to buy my own clothes, so I got to take care of them more. Whenever my parents bought me clothes, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll get new ones. Yeah. And now I want to take care of my clothes. No, I'm in the exact same boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all the Lululemon stuff that you can't throw in the dryer. Actually, that would be the one thing I would say I messed oh, up. The man. few Lulu things I threw in the dryer and they come out all screwed up. When I was younger, the amount of Lululemon Club Monaco I bought. Yeah, yeah. They took all my money when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now I just... Not that I don't still shop there, but I buy fewer quantities, but I just take yeah, care yeah. of it so much That's more. That's exactly what it is, and they last forever if you take care of them. So. Yeah. Um, was the Jordan Boyd, was that the first time you were there? Last that was my first time playing in it. What was your experience like? I had a great time. What yeah. Did, how was your like? It was awesome. Uh, a lot of fun, obviously, and you're doing it for a good cause, which is pretty yeah. important. You can feel good about yourself. Uh, and great group of guys. Like, for some of them I had met a few times, others I was kind of meeting for the first time, uh, and some it was like old friends I was catching up with, so... Yeah. Um, I'd love to go back next year. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And for anybody who's thinking about going out, and I think it's a great event to get out and, and see some good hockey for the most part. And uh, obviously a lot of fun. You get like drafted to do a team as one of the pros. And yeah. you get to meet some new people. And uh, like I said, it's an, anytime you get to combine like hockey and going out and having a good time and meeting new people, it's it's always a blast. It's really cool sitting in that room and just looking at all the, the hockey players that are there and the mm -hmm. amount of talent that just comes from this place. Yeah. And probably half the guys that weren't in there, you know, like your brother wasn't there. That's another guy who could have been in there. Like yeah, the amount yeah. of guys that could have been in that room. It's, it's ridiculous how much talent is being pumped out here. Yeah. I'm always taken aback when I come back and skate in the summer. It's just because there's so many good players. Oh, yeah. And there's, I mean, NHL jerseys left and right and guys skating. So, um, it, it's pretty exciting for sure. Who are you skating with? Uh, I skate with JP McCallum a little bit and I've gotten out with some of the pro guys now. You go out uh, with Sid yet? I, I haven't been out with him yet. No, I hope I get out with them later in the summer. I think their gear was in the room today, but they didn't come skate. So oh, I'd love yeah. to get out with those guys and just see, see what it's all about. I'm sure it's, uh, I'm going to be blown away a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It'd be good for me to push myself and kind of try to size myself up against those guys. So what do you try to do in the summer and try to improve? You know, like obviously the, you, you'll never be, you'll never be satisfied with a player. You always want to get better. Yeah. What are some things that you try to do each and every summer? Is it strength? Is it speed? Is it yeah. awareness? I don't know. Like, what do you work on and how do you determine what to work on? Well, I find exit meetings are the first thing that when you start thinking about that, like we would have ours probably a day or two after our season ends and kind of get initial reactions from our coach uh, about what we need to work on. So I take like the first part of my summer. Well, I guess because I'm going to development camp, I, I skate quite a bit before that. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to kind of get in shape for all that stuff and, and work on like specific aspects that might help me with the fitness testing. And if you have any like little nagging injuries, take care of that stuff and try to rehab it all correctly. Um, and then once you get through development camp, I don't skate too, too much. It's a lot of like strength and just trying to get your legs back, build a little bit, um, and prevent any injuries that might happen in the future. And then within the last like week, 
It's probably when I started skating the most and, and trying to get back on the ice and really get back in, into shape. It's a little bit different for me because we don't play games till the middle of October. So, I mean, I have plenty of time to get back into game wow. shape. Yeah, we start pretty late. Uh, and I'll skate a ton when I get back to school. But uh, now I'm just kind of getting the edge where I want to get back on the ice and get going again. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, for, for me too, uh, after I get like all the strength and rehabbing and whatever done, then it's just getting on the ice and kind of getting your touches and feeling the puck and working on your little skills because obviously you, you see whenever you skate with the pro guys, they're so freaking good at some, uh, like the stick handling and just being able to pull a puck from one side and shoot it or pull it around something. Like there's so many little things that uh, – you realize you need to work on to get to the next level. So there's, there's always plenty to do. A lot of the guys, like I said, that come on here that are that next step to be at the NHL, a lot of them say they don't even really ask questions. They just become a sponge when they're around these pro yeah. guys. Exactly what you said. Uh, who was it? It was Zach Fucali. He, mm-hmm. uh, he came on and he was at Montreal training camp. And I asked him, I was like, you ever talk to Carey Price about what he does to be one of the best goalies in the world? And he's like, man, he doesn't have time to answer my questions because yeah, he's yeah. too busy being the best goalie in the world. So yeah. all you can do is be a sponge around him and just watch what he does. Do yeah. you ever, do you do the same thing when you're uh, up at camp? That No, that's exactly it. Whenever you get, and you know, we're lucky enough that around camp, some of the guys, the NHL guys who are around, you get to talk to them a little bit more because they might not be in like their full season motor and training camp. It's pretty intense, but uh, anytime you get to talk to them and it's not just on ice stuff too. It's like huge about nutrition, what they do to spend their time in the summers and how they treat their bodies, like sleep supplements, all those things are, um, and things I'm like pretty interested in. I love hearing about it. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool. And then like you said, on the ice, just the little skill drills and stuff. I know I have a little notepad at home whenever I see something I like, I do you? go home and write it down and try to keep track of it. Cause I mean, once you get up at, at school in the season, a lot of the time it's like, you have like 30 or 40 minutes before practice. And sometimes the coaches are out there. You might have like 20 minutes after and you're trying to find a drill to do. Or there's a few guys standing around trying to, trying to figure out what to work on. So, um, that's, I haven't had the notepad up at school, but I'm definitely going to bring it up now and just have a few things to have in my back pocket whenever you want to go out there and work on something. Who do you like to listen? to like I always find guys in your situation there's tons of people telling you what to do I'm sure I'll probably tell you what to do by the time you leave here (laughs) but who do you decide like who to listen to do you listen to the Rangers scouts do you listen to Cornell do you listen to your parents do you you know who who do you Mm -hmm. decide to listen to or at the end of the day do you just listen to yourself yeah I think it's a little bit of everything uh the Rangers for the most part I mean in the summers they'll give me a few things to work on but during the season and I know they're an organization who's really good with it they don't really like to interfere with what the coaches are telling the players and such do you like that though I I do like that I mean it's it's nice to hear from them every once in a while like if they would come to my game and they'll tell me like how they thought I played and this thing and that and whatever but um, constructive criticism exactly exactly and I mean it's usually pretty basic stuff they're not telling you to change your game completely Um, and it's never anything about like a system uh so when I'm at school, I mean, it's pretty much all, all my coaches because I do. I mean, that's why I went there. I had a lot of faith in yeah. them and, and the way they coach and the way they teach the game. So that was a big thing. And I know, I mean, I think parents, parents is a tough one because you get some kids and hockey parents are intense. That's just the nature of it. Uh, and I, I've known some kids who I've played with who have pretty much had to say like I dad I, or mom, but for my case, mostly dad. I don't want to talk to you at ho- about hockey at all, like during the season, just because it's so like you're intense. I know you care about me, but it's it's very conflicting a lot of the time. Um, I've been super lucky because my parents are awesome. I mean, my dad. Every single time I talk to my dad after a game, he's always like he's always on the same page as me. If you know, I say I play bad, he's usually really? agrees with me. Or if I say I played well or I did this well, they're they're uh, very rarely are we like hit or hit or miss. It's pretty much always spot on, which is nice, and I can kind of talk to him about it. Um, and he knows his hockey pretty well, obviously. So uh, he, he's a good one to have around. But I'd say for me personally, those are the two two big ones. I always listen to my coaches first and, and try to learn from them. And then yeah. after that, it's nice to just talk hockey with your parents because um, cool. it works for me. Um, when you're playing out at school, where is your favorite rink to play other than your home rink? Mm. And then the, word, the, the worst rink you hate playing in? Ooh. I went to Harvard last year, not to play, yeah. obviously, but just to watch uh, Willie well, play. It's a, I love that rink. Yeah. A little rink. I like uh, my two favorite ones would be, uh, I like Quinnipiac a lot. It's a newer rink. That, and Where's that? What? Quinnipiac? I don't know what it's that where is. Peter Delibatory plays. I don't know if you know him at all. He's from around here. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Peter, if I don't, buddy. <laughs> I'll get you on here, though. Yeah. He's uh, actually Vegas drafted him two years ago, one year ago. Oh, now, yeah? So he's, he's a good player. He was a freshman there last year. Uh, so I like playing there. It's like a brand new rink. Um, pretty cool and uh there and i like harvard too so our fans have a big thing with harvard that's for sure that's like our 
in terms of like the fans and the animosity and stuff there's that's our biggest rivalry really i'm not sure if they would say the same thing which uh, <laughs> you know it's kind of funny but uh our I, fans love when we play harvard so at home that's like our huge game and they, i don't know if you ever seen the videos they throw like fish at them when they come out onto the ice why do they love playing harvard though just because of the rivalry well i think historically they've probably been the two most successful programs in our league okay uh and then i'm sure like a lot of the students probably applied to harvard and didn't get in or <laughs> some of them might have got in but for the most part you know there's that little bit of uh, uh jealousy i guess and uh for the most part like at least in my time there we've been able to beat them i think four to five times so that's like the one spot where we can get them back um so yeah and uh at home, our fans love it. And actually on the road, our fans take it upon themselves to like buy all the tickets before the Harvard fans can. <laughs> so I don't know if you talk to Will, I'll tell you, I'd say it's probably like 75% Cornell fans in the building that night. Wow. Which, and again, there's a bunch of them in Boston. So it almost turns into like a little bit of an alumni reunion. Yeah. Uh, but it is like literally a home game for us. So that's, that's pretty cool to see. Cool. Um, and then my least favorite, God, I don't know. I don't love playing at Clarkson, which is upstate. And again, they're a huge rival of ours, but it's just like, the way they i would say they play pretty similar to us like they're hard they hit the boards they're really hard and yeah it always seems like it's at the end of the season in like february when it's snowing out and just kind of grueling to an end so that would probably be the toughest place to play but it's always good games like they're they're good teams so. i don't know why i asked the question because any both of the rinks you named other than harvard i have no idea where yeah, they yeah. are <laughs> all i know is that i asked that question with the junior guys and i know yeah. the answer but i have no idea where clarkson is where is yeah. clarkson clarkson i think it's in potsdam new york so it's like potsdam upstate, yeah. upstate new york yeah okay so but when we went to harvard who did they play uh, they had a husky on their jersey um northeastern maybe? northeastern yeah okay. Great team, by yeah, the way. Holy smokes, they were good. I actually think Harvard won, but still, it was a great game. Yeah, we played them later in the year. We did well against them, actually. So when we went into Harvard, it was me, Dudes, and Billy. You met Billy. I don't know if you've met Dudes before. No, I don't know. So we walk in there, and we have these bright red vests, and we walk oh, yeah. in. Like, we're standing out, and we notice when we get in there, everyone had the exact same haircut. Everyone yeah. dressed the exact yeah. same. Yeah, 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 Everyone yeah. had the long trench coat on, <laughs> and we walked in there, and we had a we had a little buzz going, like we yeah. stood out, and we it was just it was just odd for us. Yeah. But anyways, we sat down, and people came up to us because we have our Nova Scotia flag on the back. Yeah, and a couple people came up to us and recognized it because they're down here playing golf at uh, Cabot, probably ex Cabot yeah. exactly. So a bunch of these rich folk come up to us <laughs> and just start talking Go, to us. Yeah, yeah, that's but funny. it was it was a cool. Uh, I don't know. I think Harvard's it was a cool campus. We loved it. It is a very cool campus, yeah. And like the area around it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Boston's all those four schools in Boston, and it's it's a really cool spot for college hockey and even to live. So, did you ever play at TD? No, never played at TD. So the only NHL was is there another NHL rink you have played at for uh, college, or was it only MSG? I think only MSG off the top of my head, unless I'm forgetting something. But yeah, no, we play like AHL rinks for regionals. So we played at like Providence. Um, the Providence Bruins ring and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. The only NHL one would be MSG. Do you guys fly ever or dr drive most of it? Uh, our league, we actually, like our league travels pretty good Yeah. Uh, for the most part. I think our closest game would be like an hour. Our furthest would be like five and a half maybe. We're oh, pretty close. Nothing. Yeah. Um, I know like Hockey East is like their first for some of them is like three hours. There's, that's one of the big advantages for colleges. Um, the close a lot travel. of the travels a little, makes it a little bit easier, but... Uh, no, so we've flown, like, I think we flew, so we play seven non-conference games every year uh, okay. outside of our league. So within our league, no, we never fly. Non-conferences, we do fly sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, like, we went to Northern Michigan, which is up in, like, uh, the UP. Uh, we flew there this year. We're going to Vegas next year, I think, to play a tournament, so we'll fly there. Not know. bad. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be sick. Yeah. How old are you? I'll be... 21 at the time i don't know i don't think we'll get to go out there yeah um, probably not no we're too busy <laughs> but uh, yeah either way i've never been out there so it'd be kind of fun to see and i think we're going in like january cool so be a nice break from the cold ithaca winters how does it work in a guy like your situation do like do, do the new york rangers want you to sign or maybe you don't have to talk about this mm -hmm. but how does it work for a guy like you do you, do you want to stay in school or do you want to go pro and, and i don't know how, how does that work for a guy yeah. like you to make that decision uh, it's different for everyone. Uh, I talked to them a little bit about possibly coming out this year. Yeah. I mean, they'll basically reach out at the end of the year and say, like, here's what we want you to do and, like, leave it up to you. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like, for my situation, I just felt comfortable at school. I really like it there, and I think there's still some things I can work on. And obviously the degree is worth a lot to me as well, so I want to get 
uh, as much of it done as I can. So, uh, yeah, they'll, uh, they'll reach out like most, usually at the end of the year, you talk about them with it through the year a little bit, but mm. uh, again, that's kind of just like a distraction yeah. for me personally. I'd rather just play the hockey and then figure out the rest after. But, um, I don't know. I felt like leaving school at this time would be giving up so much. Like I, I absolutely love it there. So, um, it's a pretty easy decision this year for sure. I've heard that same story from a couple guys this past year. I'm not going to give you names, but mm. there were guys that were at Harvard this year that, just took like yoga and yeah. like just stayed in school because they loved it. The yeah. development was great and they loved the lifestyle mm-hmm. instead of going to play for a team in the NHL where they'd be on the third line, maybe fourth line. Yeah. So apparently it's a common yeah, thing people like to do. There's more kids than I originally thought. Like when, when I came before I committed to school, before I even really learned much about the NCAA, I figured it would be like, kids are just trying to move on like it's a stepping stone kids are trying to move yeah. on to the next level well just like junior exactly because that that's all i'd really been exposed to and then um i like use the harvard guys as an example and just talking to some guys who have graduated and gone on to play like ben scrivens was at the event this weekend yeah uh so talking to him a little bit about because he got his degree he was a cornell guy oh was he i didn't yeah, know that played four years got his degree and then got to go play in the nhl so uh, and then like i think like jimmy vc is another great example a guy who like he dominated after his sophomore year uh, in junior year and then decided to stay for his senior year and he ended up going on to be like a free agent and stuff but for someone like that at least in my opinion to be able to get his degree and then go and play in the nhl like that's and yeah. have that to fall back like when you're done playing i can only imagine how tough it is when you're done playing to kind of like get back into real life and, and find a real job and stuff like that especially if you you know haven't done any school um so uh, yeah, it's pretty cool for me to be able to really keep my NHL dreams alive at the time and continue to work on my degree. My um, degree. Do you have any interest outside of hockey, like business? Like, what do you take it in school? What do you, I shouldn't say business off the top mm-hmm. of my head, but no, you're right. what, is it business? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well, business the, is fun. The so. business program, yeah. I actually, so I originally started in econ. Um, the way Cornell works is like there's seven, I think it's seven, like colleges within the school. So it'll be like the College of Engineering, the College of Arts and Science, uh, SC Johnson College of Business. Uh, what is that? Uh, hotel administration school is a college so that's basically like the different programs and there's majors within the programs so I started off as econ which is in the arts and science college yeah and then I transferred into the business school which is just like smaller classes um, like a little bit harder to get into yeah. probably a little bit more valuable degree so what do you like about it um I'm not like I like the content a much much more like I got to take like my finance classes and my accounting classes right now I'm just Cause I've only done one year in the program now. I'm okay. kind of playing catch up, but I've kind of got to touch on a lot of things. Like this year I did all my marketing, accounting, finance, all that fun stuff. Are you a numbers guy? Like you're good uh, with numbers? Yeah, I can do them. I'm not sure I love them yet. I'll probably do finance. Um, okay. I'll, I take a, like a few more finance classes next year. I'm doing investments in corporate finance. So I'll really get a grasp for it then and see okay, if I, cool. if I love it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I like meeting the kids. There's only like 150 kids in the program, which isn't too, too much. It might be 200. Um, considering the school is like 16,000 kids or something like that. Wow. So that must be great for studying the like study groups. Yeah, it is. And you get to know kids who are, I, I just found in the big lectures, like there's so many people there for the most part, you end up just sitting down and taking notes. But, um, once I got into like a little bit smaller classes, you get to know some people and hear different backgrounds and people from all over the world. So I found that was pretty neat. Just getting to meet, meet different people and kids who are just normal students, kids who are athletes with other teams and yeah. all that. It's cool. That's I think that's one of the best parts about being a student athlete is, uh, you know, the the networking part of it mm-hmm. outside. Because when you're in junior hockey, you don't get me wrong. Sure, you get to go to school, but they yeah. don't. I don't think they don't take it as serious as when you guys go to college and yeah, yeah. the international students. You have students from all over the world that go to Cornell. Yeah, literally. So that must be a really cool thing. As soon as you leave there, you just have a connection with a guy that lives in yeah. Los Angeles, and you can just meet up with them at some no, point. That's exactly right. There's people from all over the world, and you know, just hearing the stories and stuff of people who might be coming from like over in Asia or different parts of Europe and, and all that. It's very neat. That's cool. Yeah, it is. Um, when it comes to the business program, do you ever see yourself maybe after hockey doing something related to business and hockey, or is that just too far down the road? You don't even think about it. I could definitely see myself doing that. I mean, for right now, I'm really just yeah. focused on playing <laughs> hockey. I, I'm just working on my degree, but, um, yeah, drop hockey. Let's just do school. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, let's no. just be a business I guy. I, I think I'd go nuts. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll probably want to stay in the game as long as I can. Yeah. I know. So there's some kids I know who work like internships down in New York City or Boston or wherever. And it, it's a different world. Like they're working over 100 hours a week and just like always at the office. And they love it. I mean, they're all about that kind of stuff. But I just I think I'd 
lose my mind doing that kind of stuff. So I don't know. We'll see at the end of the day. I'm sure once, uh, if I did ever stop playing hockey, then I'd probably need yeah. something to fill my time up. So maybe that would work out. But, yeah. um, right now, like I said, I'm happy to just keep playing the game as long as I can. And we'll figure yeah, that man. out later. So when do you go back to camp? What do you go to the main camp this year? No, we are no. allowed at main camps. We just do development camps for NCAA guys. And then so. when do you go back to Cornell? I'm going. Oh back. yeah, because I forgot. I keep forgetting. You told me that because you can't go to main camp. Yeah, you signed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm going back August 18th or 19th, I think. And then we they run like a hockey camp, so I'm going to work the hockey camp and sick. Do all that for five days and just hang out and probably start working out down there again and nice. get to see the guys. And then we help all the freshmen move into like their townhouses on the 23rd or the 24th of August. Have you talked to Steiny yet? I've, t I've been texting him like all summer trying to help him pick out his course and stuff, but actually he seems pretty on top of it so far at least we'll, we'll see how uh, <laughs> I mean it's a whirlwind once you get down there it's a whole different world you're trying to figure out like where to go for your classes what times practice what times this what times that like so it, he's going to be texting you non-stop yeah that's exactly what it is and, but the nice thing is you get like what's their class I think they have eight kids so he'll have like eight kids to experience it with and enjoy yeah. it I, I, freshman year is like so much fun because everything's so new to you you like literally anything would like excite me like i was fired up to go to the dining hall for my first meal and and do all this kind of stuff so uh freshman year is a lot of fun and then, i mean obviously every year is fun but it, it's a very different experience your freshman year than any of the other three so what's the biggest problem you think he's gonna have as soon as he gets there what was your biggest problem as soon as you get there Ooh. is it like unpacking is it trying to find a grocery store i guess you go to the hall but yeah what's the biggest problem you think he'll have ah that's a good question i think for the first like five days or something like that they're not allowed to work out with the team because they have to do all their compliance stuff yet what does that mean uh, basically they have to do like paperwork and anything to get cleared by all the doctors and stuff like that before they can work out with the team so he'll probably just drive himself nuts not being able to, <laughs> to get in the gym and do all that stuff yeah um that was the toughest part for me i mean they've been doing it so long down there the coaches that like ever so like we'll go up and help them move all their stuff and help them unpack and they have it set up so like all the kids come in at different times yeah and i mean there's 20 something guys who are going to be helping them do all that stuff so for the most part it's like a pretty organized system i'd say we make everything as easy as it could possibly be on them yeah um and then the first week's a ton of fun just because that's when everyone's getting back and people are going out together and and all that good stuff so um yeah the first week's a whirlwind uh, and then I think after that, it'll be pretty smooth sailing for him. I think he's going to be a good player for us. At so. what point do you get to try on like your gloves and your helmet and tell the team what kind of stick you get? Is that the second he, week? No. So he would have ordered all that. Like, oh, it's already done. A while ago. Yeah. Um, some kids, again, I don't think he had the chance to come visit. It's tough when you're at like a prep school because you can't like fly, like we're playing every weekend anyway. Yeah. But, uh, it's like you're not at home you can't just get your parents to drive you to the airport and get a flight down so he didn't come on his official visit either which is when a lot of kids try on the it's stuff like the same story for you guys. yeah for the most part it changed a little bit at the draft but until then <laughs> it was like it was like freakishly similar because we uh we both got drafted by the sea dogs both went to st andrews both got drafted by the same ushl team both played like four or five games in the ushl at christmas break of our senior year both committed to cornell it was like very very similar and then uh Obviously, he got picked up by Colorado very, very early in the draft. So, um, Very, very early. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I was super happy to see him go. We were up there and saw him. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was on cloud nine for sure. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, third round to me is pretty, pretty early pick. So um, I'm happy for him. Yeah, I think he's going to do well. So what do you have planned for the rest of the summer while you're here before you go? Are you going to just be by a lake? What are you doing? Uh, well, now, like I said, for these next week and a half, I'm working out every day and skating a lot more now. Nice. So that'll be good to get back on the ice. And then the last week before I go back to school, I'm going to a PEI golfing with my uh, my parents and my brother. So oh, yeah? Be fun. Just because I haven't seen Justin really too much all summer. He's been off doing his thing. That guy's I, busy, man. Yeah, he's, he's always got something going on. Um, so, yeah, it'd be good to get over there and unwind for a little bit and golf. And uh, then I go back to school. So the, the summers go by so fast now. How long have you been home for? Two months? <sighs> yeah, two months. But then it, even like even still, it feels so short because like the Memorial Cup took up probably my first two weeks back and I was seeing my buddies and all that. And then then you go down for development camp and come back. It just I can't believe how quickly it, it's all gone by. You wouldn't change it for the world, though. Oh, no. God, no. It's been great. And like I said, I'm also getting to the point now where I'd love to stay for a few more weeks, but I'm just so, so freaking excited to get back to school. I love yeah. it down there. So it's fun watching your development and I'm sure it's fun living it. So yeah, yeah, it's been great. Um, last couple minutes here are yours. So if you want to thank family, friends, 
go ahead. I always like to give the last minute to whoever you want to talk to. Yeah, I mean, I would, I could probably go on for for hours thanking people, but I think the biggest three would be my uh, my parents and my brother. I think they've done so much for me, and I mean, you can even extend that to grandparents, aunts and uncles, and stuff. But um, I know Justin and I both have have great followings with our our family, and they've done so much for us. So uh, those would be the the big thank yous for me. Awesome. Well, Morgan, man, thank you very much for coming on. I hope to see you in New York one day. Yeah, and if you are so. in New York, we're coming down and we need an all access tour of all the stuff that you do. OK, yeah, hopefully I'll get there and we can figure that out. Love it. All right. Thank you. No worries, man. Everyone listening, make sure to go to all of our social media outlets, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. We are out. Peace.